This week we're talking about forms in React, and I wanted to start off by looking at some of the big ideas, how, uh, how we manage forms in React, and just do a quick run through of some ideas in the notes, take a look at a little bit of code, and then what I thought I would do is to code a number of larger examples that show you know, more realistic use cases of how we work with, with forms. So let's just start out simple. We know from lots of previous work with forms that this is our primary means of interacting with the user in terms of user entered data. So if we want to accept input from a user, this is one of the main ways that we do it. Forms are, <laughs> forms are not fun to, to build, to be honest with you. Uh, they're terrible to style. They, there's lots of edge cases to think about. Like if you think about the most frustrating experiences that you have as a user on the web, it's often related to forms. And developers get this wrong all the time. And so it's a really good idea for you to pay attention to the forms that you enjoy using, or maybe enjoy is too strong a word. Pay attention to the forms that you don't hate. <laughs> uh, Pay attention to the experiences that don't hurt when you're entering things on the web. Those are the kinds of experiences that you want to emulate. So these are things where they work on your phone and they work on desktop. They work, um, they allow people to enter their information so they don't have overly restrictive uh, validation checks that don't make sense. Like, you know, students who have a space in their name and the form won't let them input their name like or their, their, their name is too long and it won't accept it. Stupid things like this. So we can do better. And if the user's entering an email, does it validate for emails? Stuff like this. Like there's really simple things we can do. And the web is great. HTML5 has lots of things to help us do this. So React leverages everything to do with forms. So what you know about forms in general is true in React. So what's different in React? The big thing that we're gonna encounter is that typically a form is uh, a piece of state in the DOM. So if I type in my name into a form input control, the, the value is stored in the DOM. It is the state is maintained in the form. So with React, React is worried about rendering the UI, rendering those components. And so what we have to do is we have to lift the state out of the DOM and we have to move it back into React. We have to let React control the value that is you know, being stored inside of the form so that we can manage rendering the form and up doing updates dynamically based on those values. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about this idea of creating uh, controlled components. And so in a form, what we're really thinking about is we're we're rendering data that React is aware of. So React is managing the state, and the form is just rendering it. So the form we sort of take away the form as a a primary um, means of uh, you know what gets rendered. All right, so let's just take a look at an example here. So in the notes, we have a we have a form. You can see the form at the bottom. It has a label, which is something you always want to do. You want to have a label, and you have an input control. And so here's the input control right here. So the big ideas here are that we are storing the data on the component itself. So we're using the use state hook and we're keeping track of user information. So we have user data and we have set user data and initially it's being set to null. So the example here is using the use effect hook, which what it's gonna do is it's gonna render this whole component once and then it's going to introduce this side effect. So after the first render, it's going to call this right here and it's going to update this data. So actually, we could consolidate this all into one, which I'll do in the minute in the code, but it shows you an example of, you know, using the use effect as like an initial uh, startup hook to be able to, to render this. And that's what it's saying here. Basically, I have no dependencies and I only want to run this once. Okay, so then if we skip down a little bit, we'll see what's going on here. So in the render portion of this function, if we don't have any data, if we have nothing set, we're going to return null. And this is really important because in the initial render, we're gonna have null, there's nothing to render. 
However, if we have something to render, then what we're going to do is we're going to render this form. And so we're going to, we're basically going to take the user information and we're going to serialize it into this form. We're going to render it into the form. So React is going to take care of putting all the data in here. And what I mean by that is you'll see that in the input control, we have a couple of things that are significant here. We have a value. So the value of an in input control is what gets displayed in the DOM. And so here it's saying, take the user data object, reach in and get the full name and display it. And on change, we have a handler. So we have an on change handler and it's pointing to this handle change function. So let's go take a look at this code. So up here, we have the handle change function. So importantly, you'll notice that it takes an event, it takes an event object, and we're gonna use the event object in order to get information about the, com the control in the DOM that triggered this. So we call that the target. So here you can see, we're saying let target equals e.target. So e.target is going to be the control or the element that the event was dispatched to. And so in this case, it's gonna be this input control right here. So now we have a reference to it and we can also do things like we can get the name. So you see here the name is, name on an input control is the value that's gonna get sent to the server. So it's the name of the data, whereas we can also do ID, and ID is the name of the element in the DOM. It's the unique identifier in the DOM. So name is a like a data identifier for what we're storing in this, in this value. So we grab the name, we grab the value from the target DOM element, the input control. And then this code here is updating our state. And so what it's doing is it is creating a new user object, brand new object. And it's using syntax here that says, take everything that's inside the current user and copy it over here. In other words, copy all of the uh, key value pairs that exist on the user. So this example is, sort of over-engineered right now because we only have one thing on here. We only have one name, but in a second, I'll make it bigger and you'll see what, what we're doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy all the data out of this. So what you're seeing here is how we clone an object. So take the existing user data, clone it, make a new object. And you might say, why do we do this? Why don't we just update the data? And the important thing to note about what React does is React deals with objects and data that never change. And you're like, well, they must change. And so what I mean by they don't change is if something in the object needs to change, I need to make a whole new object. So React is sort of observing or watching that entire object for anything to change. So I don't go deep, deep, deep inside the object to make changes. I just change the whole object. And if I change it, it's really easy for React to see that it has changed. So this is the way that it's like watching for our data and making sure that if the data changes, then we need to re-render or we need to make updates to the way the DOM looks. So we copy everything out of the old object and put it in a new object. Then it does this line right here where it says, take this new object and go in and find a key with the same uh, property name as the name on the input control. So again, this is a highly generic example where it's taking the full name and it's, it's so this basically says new user dot full name equals the new value. So whatever, whatever the new value is when the user makes a change, then we're gonna put it here. And finally, it calls set user data. It updates the data. And what that's going to do is it's gonna trigger a re-render. So the form's gonna get drawn again. So we have, we, We've taken the state out of the DOM and we've lifted it up a layer into React so the state can live in React and then React is deciding when to draw this and when it needs to update. So we have this update cycle uh, sitting around the, the data. So what I, what I think I'll do here is I'll show you, um, I'll just take this code and play with it a little bit to, to give you a sense of, of what's going on. So I have, um, I have a React app here and I'm going to just grab this code and I'm going to throw it into here, like so. And I just need to add in my hooks. 
So I'm going to import uh, use effect and use state from React. Okay, so here's what our uh, form looks like right now, and uh, let's 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 just play with this code a little bit. Let's understand what the code is doing. Okay, so off the top, I have my user data right here. So what I'm going to do is just to show you what's going on. I'm going to console.log um, user data like that. And what you'll see is you'll see that when this runs, it goes through here a couple of times, right? So the, the user data, you can see the rendering happen happening various times, like every time that it goes through, or if we want to see when it, when it calls the use effect, console.log calling use effect. And if I clear this, like so, right? So you can see in the first run, it's null. So user data starts out being null because it's rendering the whole thing. So that's why we're ending up here. So for the very first one, that happens. So for example, if I commented this out, like if I took this code and commented it out and I reran it, you would see that this thing would never render anything. So it goes through the first time, the data is null, it calls the effect, the effect doesn't do anything, and so it just it basically just renders null and there's no changes because the data is never updating. So it's because we're updating this data here um, that this thing gets rendered on the second time through, okay? So now let's understand, let's keep going down through this. So we have our input control and the input control uses user data dot full name. So one thing I would say, one the first change I would make to this code, if I was writing this code from scratch, is I would not do this else after return. And you'll often see, uh, this is a big one for me, but other people will write about this, where they'll say that this code, you notice how all of the, the main part of our code is indented to the right? So what I want you to do is, I want you to always try to keep your code left indented. So. In other words, I want you to, if your code starts drifting to the right, it probably means that you could refactor your code and clean it up a little bit. So let's look at how this code reads now. It says, if the user data is nothing, if it doesn't exist, then we obviously can't do things like this. We can't render the name in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna return null, and null is significant. If I just said return, just to show you what would happen if I save this, and refresh this, you'll see that I have an error. So React says uh, nothing was returned from the render function. This usually means a return statement is missing or to render nothing, return null. So when you wanna, when you wanna render nothing, like so you're basically saying don't, don't do anything just yet, it always has to be null, not undefined. And if you just say return, you're basically saying return undefined. That's what return means. It's returning nothing, which means I'm return, in, in essence, I'm returning undefined. And so this thing, it panics and says, I can't do this. So we have to do the special null case rate like this. Okay, so we go through and we render the data out like this. Okay, so let's, let's update our data a little more. Let's put um, an email address in here. Let's say that we also have an email address and it's gonna be Jason at, uh, you know, born, dot com, something like that. So now we have two pieces of data in our state. And what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to add another, I'm just going to expand my form a little bit. So I had a single label and input. And now I'm going to say that I also have an email. And very importantly, when you are creating your forms, you always want to use the most appropriate type. So when you're doing the type, the type text is the most basic of all of them. But if you're doing an email address, then you should put email in here. If you're doing a URL, you should put a URL in here, etc. There's lots of built-in types. And so you should always use the most appropriate one you know, that you can. So I'm going to give this thing a name of email. And you'll notice that the name that I'm choosing 
is the same name that I'm using on my object up here. Okay, so now I'm going to say render user data dot email, like so, and I'm going to use the same handle change function, which we'll talk about in a second. So if I save this, I now have a form that looks like this, and you can see that I have two pieces of data that are being rendered in my form. Okay, so let's again look at what's going on here. So my my data looks like this. Now, if I wanted to, I could get rid of this effect. Now, the reason this effect is here is that sometimes this data uh, needs to be loaded. So if the data isn't known when you do the first render, because you have to go and get the data from uh, the server, then you're going to need to do a use effect like this in order to give yourself time to go and do that side effect of loading the data. But in this case, we aren't loading the data. The data is statically available. Like we know it at compile time. So really what I could do is I could just take this object, get rid of it from here, and let's put it right here. So I'm gonna dump it here. I'm gonna save this. So now the initial state of my user is here and React is saying to me, well, you don't need use effect anymore, so why don't you get rid of it? So I'm gonna get rid of use effect. I only need to have my state. And the app works the exact same way. So at this point, we really don't have a case where the data is ever gonna be null. However, it's not a bad idea to leave that in there because it just catches the case that, you know, we ever refactor this and change it so it doesn't work. So now I have a full name and I have an email. Okay, so let's look at what happens here when I make a change. So if I go in here and I remove the E like so, so I make these changes, we need to figure out what's going on over here in our, um, what's going on over here in the uh, in the code. So how do these things, how do we connect all these things up? Okay, so let's take a look at this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this function completely. I'm just gonna return right here. So this code is all gonna like not be called. And if I um, run the code now, I have a warning, it says I have unreachable code, which is bad, but we're doing this on purpose. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and I'm, I'm going to start typing. So right now I'm typing into the form and nothing's happening. So what you're seeing here is the fact that React says that the full name is Jason Bourne like this. And so down here, it's rendering the full name into the value of the input control. That's what's happening right here. So if we inspect this, you'll see that uh, the, the value is Jason Bourne in the inspector. And when I'm typing, it's not changing. So what we've done is we've, we've broken this, we've broken this component in a sense. We've made it so that we have to update the data, not in the DOM, not here, but we have to update the data here. We have to update the state of the data. So this function here, let's just watch what it does. I'm going to throw a debugger keyword in here to let me debug this. I'm going to reload this and I'm going to make a change. So I'm going to delete the E. So I delete the E and you can see that I'm inside of this code right now. So let's just look at what's happening as I step through this code. So the first thing to note is that I have E and E is this synthetic base event. So what React is doing React is giving me like uh, a, a simulated DOM event for what's going on here. And if, if you wanted to look at E, you can see I have E is this object and I can say E.target. E.target is going to refer to this input element. So I can get access to the input element that caused the change. Now this is really important because I now have two input elements, not just one. So E.target lets me know which one I got, and e.target.value lets me know what the new value is. So I deleted an E, and you can see that the new value is missing the E. And you can also see that e.target.name is equal to whatever the name is on this thing. So full name as an example. Okay, so we go back to our code. Let's step through it. So this is what's happening here. Target is e.target. 
value is equal to the value on the target and name is equal to the name on the target. Okay, so now let's understand this code here. So we have the old data. If I go back over here, if I say user data, user data is that object right there. So if I make a new object, so if I were to say, for example, dot, 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 user data, what it's gonna do is it's going to return a new object which has the same data inside it as the other object, okay? Now, a, real, a really neat trick you can do is you can override things. So you'll see in re, a lot of people will do this sort of thing in React. They'll say dot, 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 user data, and then what they'll do is they'll make a change. So what if I wanna change the email? So I wanna copy all of the data, except I wanna update the email. So I'll say comma email is equal to new email.com. So what I've done is I've duplicated everything inside, but then I have overwritten the final bit of whatever it is that is changing, right? Like I've, I've made that change here. So that's essentially what we're about to do. So in the, in the debugger here, you can see that we're making a clone. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna use the name value and we're gonna say, take user data dot name, whatever name is, in this case, it's full name and change it to the new value. So that's gonna copy everything, but update just the one thing. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna set the new user data. And as soon as the data gets set, it's gonna trigger React to re-render the component. So that's what's gonna allow this thing to show that there's an E missing because the data has changed. So it's really important in our code, we have to, whenever we're doing something like this, we have to control the flow of data in and out of the component. So here we are setting the value based on state that we are holding up here. And we are managing the change event so that whenever it happens, we run through our change handler here so that we can get access to, um, get access to the new value and then set the new value inside. Okay, and let me just resave this. So, Let's add another, another field just for fun, just to see some different ways that we could work with this. So let's say that we're actually gonna build an email app. So I'm gonna change this around. I'm gonna say this email is going to be, um, let's say recipient, let's say subject and uh, body. So by default, all of these are gonna be empty strings. I'm gonna have an object that looks like um, an email message. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna change user data. So instead of user data, let's call it uh, email. Uh, replace all and I need to change set email to set email like so, replace all. Okay, so we have an email object, a recipient, a subject, and a body. So let's just update, uh, let's update our code a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this a little bit, uh, a little bit prettier by, um, I kind of want these uh, labels to render on their own, as, an, as their own block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say um, class name equals, uh, label and I'll do this for this one as well class name equals label and then what I'll do is I'll modify the CSS here and I'll say dot label and I'm gonna display as a block so that when it when it renders them it puts them on their own line just as an example and we could also say uh, you know that we want the width to be 100% so that it goes you know, further across. And we could, if we wanted to, we could say that we want these input controls to have a, a, like a larger width. So if I wanted to do the same kind of thing for my input control, I mean, I could, I could also just do it like this. I could say um, input controls inside of a label, make them 100% of the available width like so. So they go all the way across, something like that. And we could, just say that we want the body to have a margin of um, 25 pixels, something like that. 
just so that we have a little bit of room like so. And if we wanted to, we could also say we, you know, the max width on the body should be something like um, 500 pixels so that it's not so full. And if we wanted to put it into the center, we could just say, you know, set the left uh, margin left to be auto and margin right to be auto. So we get like our form looks like that, something like that. Okay, so we have, we're getting closer, but I wanna, I wanna change this a little bit more. I wanna, I wanna put in another control down here. I'm gonna put in a uh, text area. So let's say label and I'll say message and then I'll say uh, text area like so. And again, we got to do text area. Let's do this for dot label text area. Like that. Okay, so um, let's update our, our app so that it does what we want. So we're going to need to um, play a little bit differently with the controls now. The reason I wanted to introduce this control is because it works differently than the input controls. So we have a text control, we have an email control, and we have a text area control, and text area works differently than the other three. So we already know how to put the value in for these ones, like so. But what I'm gonna have to do in order to put it into a text area, text areas don't have a value attribute. So instead what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw it into the inner text or the inner HTML, the content area of this element. So inside here, what I wanna do is I wanna render email.message. I think I called it message, uh, email.body. Email.body goes down here like that. So we gotta do one more thing. We need to say on change, whenever this changes, then what we're gonna do is we're going to get the get the data out of here. And if you look at the notes, like if we go down, we have coverage of all of these. Uh, so like a text area here, we're gonna handle the change event on uh, the text area as well, right? So we're gonna do the same, the same concept. So when this, when this happens, we'll do handle, change, like so. So I'll save this and this re-renders over here. Let's give it a chance, give it a try. So name, Dave, email, Dave at email.com, message. And you can see that this is working. So as I'm going through, all of this state is getting updated. And what's happening if I put, you know, if I make a change here, you can see that it's triggering the handle change event and it's going through and it's copying all of the values from the email and then setting the new email up so that the state gets you know, we get we get the new state, whatever the user has has typed, gets added to what was in there. Okay. Now, interestingly, we have a we have an error message here that we need to talk about. So, the way that I'm doing it is actually not correct. And in, in you can see here that there's a component is changing, and an uncontrolled input. A component is changing an un, an uncontrolled input to be controlled. This is likely caused by a value being changed from undefined to a defined value. So the problem that we have here is that even though this is the correct way to render things in a text area, React doesn't do it this way. React also exposes a value on a text area. So email.value should go here. Uh, not value, email.body should go like this. So I'm gonna refresh this. And we'll try it again. So if I say um, Dave, and oh, I still have my bug. I just paused to look at what I was doing wrong there. And it's because I'm going fast and I didn't update my uh, form to match my label. So if we just, let's just go back for a second. So I've got state that looks like this. I've got recipient, subject, and body and I need to just update my form so that it follows the same thing. So I wanna say the email is to, this needs to be an email type 
and it's going to be the recipient. The second one should be the subject. Subject needs to be of type text. And this is going to be subject, subject. And the final one is our, um, our body. So I give it a name of body, handle change, and then I render the value like so. So if I do this, let's just look. So this, oh, I still have it wrong. What am I doing wrong? Uh, two. Uh, to Dave at uh, email.com. This is the subject. This is the body of the message. Like that. Okay, so that works. So you can see even if I'm going fast and I don't think, you have to be careful that the you have this layer of, you're pulling things apart. You're adding this new layer of abstraction. So the data moves out of the DOM, it moves up here into the state, and then we're handling uh, we're handling the state changes in React, and then React is taking care of re-rendering the way that this thing looks. The last thing I'll just point out before we pause on this discussion is we have an on submit, so we have an event handler for the submission of the form as a whole, and you'll notice that usually you would have like an action here uh, and you know, you would you would specify I want to post this, or I want to um, I want to use get, and you would say I want to send it to this particular URL on on the server. But here you can see we're not defining we're not defining a location because we're going to handle this in code, and so when we submit it, it's going to run in here, and let's just uh, throw a debugger in here and. I'll show you what happens when I submit. So I refresh this, it's gonna to go to dave at email.com, subject is subject line, message body, like this, and if I click submit, you'll see that I'm in here. So again, I have another event, and if I go down, you'll see that what it's doing here is it's, <clears throat> it's going to use the event to prevent the default thing from happening. So like if I didn't have the default, if I didn't do this uh, prevent default, let me just show you what that would look like. So uh, Dave at email.com, subject, subject line, message, and we submit it. And uh, we go through here, and if the form was set to send the, you know, to be sent off, then what's going to happen is the form is going, it's going to reload the page, and so you can see that the page just reloaded. It's it's basically posting it to itself here, which isn't what we want. So what we want to do is we want to tell the form to the form submission event. We want to prevent it from doing the default thing it normally does, which is posting that or sending that off to the server. So we're going to get rid of that. And then here you can see that we're going to take our state, our email, and in this case we're stringifying it and console logging it. So let's just let's just take a look here. Uh, to Dave at example.com, subject line and message body submit. Go here, console log it. We go here and you can see that we have the data here. So I'm not gonna worry about actually submitting the form here because I'm gonna do that in another video. But this is the idea. I now have a, another, uh, I have an event handler that can handle the case of doing this. Okay, so what I would encourage you to do, I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these, but they all work in a, in a similar way. Um, working with select tags, the one thing that I have to do here is I often have to populate this. And so sometimes you'll populate it from, um, a request to the server to get a bunch of data, and then you'll use um, an array and a map, and you'll you'll you know populate out all these options and figure out which one is selected. To figure out which one is selected, I have to loop through and see if you know if multiple are selected. Do I which one, which three are are currently selected in the list? So take a look through these. Take a look at how we do things like checkboxes, radio buttons, the file input, and so on. And what I want to do, I have two follow-up examples where I will build 
uh, I'll build some forms that take care of doing some common things so that we can just explore a little more deeply how this works. And also at the bottom of the notes, there's a note about using uh, Formic. And I thought it would be good to get, for me to give you an example of working with different third-party libraries for doing validation and for handling some of the complex edge cases with uh, working with forms. So we'll do that in uh, the next videos and I'll see you, uh, see you there.